Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at standard C++ exceptions. Uh, so uh, I'm going to create a class here because I want to prove to you that uh, exceptions can even be thrown from constructors. Uh, so let's create a class here called can go wrong. And I'll put the brackets in there. Let's give it a public constructor can go wrong. And I'll give that an inline implementation here. And in this constructor, I'm going to allocate some memory. Let's say char pointer p memory equals new char, and put the um, brackets in there, and let's allocate some number of bytes. It's usually considered better to allocate bytes if possible in powers of two, but I won't worry about this here. And let's say delete, and uh, I need the, the brackets in there because we're deleting an array, or at least a pointer. Uh, to a um, load of bytes. Um, so let's let's try this. Um, I can type can go wrong and um, wrong. Now that, that should work. I'm not asking for too much memory here. So let's run this. Now if I increase the amount of memory that I'm trying to use, like this, try this. Let's see if this, this works. It might do. In fact, we get now an exception because my computer can't allocate that much memory. Uh, normally, if we didn't have exceptions, we can't really allocate memory in a constructor because we can't get a, a return code from a constructor to say that something's gone wrong. Uh, but if you use exceptions, then you have a nice mechanism uh, for catching memory allocation exceptions or other exceptions in a constructor, which I'm going to show you. Um, so it's worth, it's worth trying this on your IDE, first of all. Uh, as I said in the last tutorial, you might need to enable exceptions for your compiler. And um, it, it, it used to be the case that sometimes on some implementations, the default behavior of new was simply to return null if, uh, if the memory couldn't be allocated. But now, as far as I know, the majority or even all uh, implementations of C++ will throw an exception if you can't allocate enough memory with new. So it's worth checking this and if you don't get an exception, no matter how big this number is, um, you need to check the documentation for your compiler, check new and see what, how it's supposed to behave if not enough memory is allocated and whether you can turn on exceptions somehow, maybe configure new um, to get this exception to be thrown because it's, it is important. To, to be able to check whether you've successfully allocated memory or not. Let's try and catch this exception. So I'm going to put a try round this class here. And I'm going to put a catch in, which we'll, we'll deal with in a moment. Let's see if we can format that. Uh, so if we look at the um, error message from throwing the exception out of main, it says we've got a standard bad alloc. Uh, so the exception is bad alloc, and it's in the standard namespace. And I, I'm already saying using namespace standard in this program. So let's let's try this. Um, so remember, if it's an object that's being thrown, which this is, this is an object of the class bad alloc. We want to catch a reference to it, and let's call that e. Um, I, I I'm following the convention here, the Java type convention of giving my classes uppercase first letters and my variables lowercase first letters. But of course, not all C++ programmers follow that. So bad alloc has a lowercase first letter here, but it is actually the name of a class. And the important thing is to pick a convention and stick to it rigidly in your own code. Let's do a cout here. I'm going to say cout e. And um, bad alloc has a method called what that enables us to uh, print something useful on the screen. So if we try that now and we run it, um, we're, we're outputting this here. Let's actually just prove that by saying here, caught exception. And we'll run this. Whoops, I've got an error here. Let's put the put to operator in there. Try it again. And so we've caught a exception here. Um, we've, yeah, we've got some other information here which um, is, uh, I guess, is coming from new, but we have successfully caught the exception. Let's put C out down here, still running, Endler, and 
run this program. Whoops. And if we run this now, then we find it, it is still running, but we've, we've just got some error output coming out here. Um, so the important thing is that we've, we've caught the exception and um, we can then take action and terminate the, the program gracefully if, if necessary. You probably do want to terminate your program if you can't allocate the memory that you need. If we, if we look up bad alloc, let's go to Safari here and um, search for... In fact, I'm going to search for C++ exception because, in fact, um, there's bad alloc is a child class of a, um, of a parent exception class in C++. So if we take a look at this C++ reference here, or any good C++ reference, we're going to hopefully see the parent base class of C++. Unfortunately, I'm currently uploading a huge number of videos, so it's a little bit slow here. And the, the base class here, which is in standard namespace and exception, we're going to take a look at this in the next tutorial. But basically, the standard C++ exceptions um, all inherit from this exception class. And therefore, they have this what method that um, will give you a printable string um, explaining kind of what's gone on, or at least letting you know what the exception was. And uh, if you create your own exception, which we'll take a look at in the next tutorial, you can use this. Um, you can use this. You can use this class, this base class, and implement your own what method as well. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, again, for for an exercise, try this yourself. See if you can allocate enough mem memory to throw an exception and then catch the exception and check that you can do that correctly. So that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.